good morning all together. Um, my name is Thomas Bremer. I'm from Germany. I'm a software developer. As free as I'm working as a freelancer, mainly in the area of embedded systems and uh, well, geoscience or geospatial science is um, kind of my hobby, uh, which on the one hand gives me lots of fun, entertainment, hopefully useful results, um, but I don't have have much time for it um, and with with this this thing I'm going to present here I've hit well some in in some some big bubble um, which might explode some at some time so he's not the AV no, guy no. Huh? okay <laughs> yeah okay I expected that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one in, in fast, so yeah. Or something like this. <laughs> it's, so you added the, the camouflage. Yeah. Yeah, well, for the remainder, I need the, the slides. Well, the first slide I can start. I can I can try to start my presentation without the slides because uh, the the first stuff I can simply tell you. Um, I started with um, with a presentation or the idea of uh, Thomas Alva Edison, um, who, well, rumor has it that he has invented the light bulb, which isn't true. He hasn't done it. It was a German called Heinrich Goebel, and uh, Edison made it uh, use or usable uh, for the public. This this light bulb, and this the screw mount, which you know, or which maybe. The, the elder people of you know from when, when we had these incandescent light bulbs uh, to plug or to screw in, um, they have different sizes, E10, E14, E20, E7, and this E stands for Edison, so that's where his name has remained until today. But he's also famous for certain uh, quotes he made, and one of it, this is, um, genius is 1% inspirations and 99% perspiration. This also, well, this also holds for me because I'm more on the 1% side, I, I have to say. And last year I've been here and there was a talk uh, about this web server 3 geonamesorg I have to, to correct the, the slides and see there are some typos on it, on them. Um, this, this web server uh, had the feature that uh, you, you you give it some, some geo coordinates interactively by clicking, or that it also has had an API, and you get back a combination of three, three city names worldwide, um, which represent this, this location. Um, it's, well, it's not a kind of compression, compression, but it's kind of a mental compression because you three, three words with a meaning, or you maybe know them. Um, have uh, they are more easily more easily to remember than uh, to uh, to long decimal numbers? Sorry. And here, Sorry. yeah, <laughs> I try. Um, yeah, um, and he also had uh, on this website, or he has on this website, the feature that you can encode the um, the. These two geo names, uh, the, these two-dimensional ge geo coordinates into uh, a one-dimensional, so to say, uh, hash string uh, of eleven characters. Um, and he, uh, the presenter, also told about a Hilbert curve, which was. <laughs> hey, you, you, you're binding me. <laughs> um, he also told about the Hilbert curve we he used for this um, for this mapping or for this conversation uh, to uh, to reduce the to reduce the borders. Now he's also taking me away the. I'm sorry. The text. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's okay. <laughs> you just have to do your work. Yeah, just need to make. I'm only here for fun. <laughs> yeah. I've already used it to watch TV uh, and <laughs> stuff like that. Okay, I'm gonna get the GoGraph on your cable. 
Okay, let's see. Okay, so uh, what I did then after, because I found the, the idea rather interesting, um, was that I analyzed the website, and I had a closer look at it, so to say, um, and I, I saw that uh, the mapping really works in both direction. You can can enter geo coordinates and get the the word combination or back. Um, I already told you that there's an API where you can which you can use. Um, there's a link to the source code, which is also uh, appreciable uh, in terms of open source. And there's also a map uh, in the user interface, but it's rather small. Um, is improvable, so to say, and also the user interface uh, around it is also improvable. Um, so I had a closer look at the code. It has been written in, in Perl. It's, um, the, the code um, is working as expected, um, but it's not, not easily readable. Um, then in the code, there are some, well, some Obstacles, so to say, or almost obstacles. Um, it's tweakable because um, some big integer representation is used so for arbitrary size integers, which are not needed. Um, there is a bit shuffling code in it, which is uh, in the which is done in the the most standard way, uh, which is which is heavily tunable. Um, and uh, also the uh, the hashes uh, I told you about the, this elf eleven letter, letter string is done of or is, it consists of twenty six characters uh, uh, all alphabetic characters and the ten digits. Um, there are other representation which only use thirty two characters and digits per per letter to make it. Um, well, to, to uh, avoid some, some rude words which, which, which you might create uh, with such a mechanism. So, um, so to say, this, uh, this free geonames.org website represents um, a very good idea. Um, it works, uh, but it's still improvable in, in terms of uh, UI and also coding style. Um, and uh, I would say it's maybe in the area of uh, fifty percent if you if you use this Hilbert's uh, this this Edison scale, uh, as I called it. But then there came, there was the idea of the Hilbert curve, um, and this this now is was was the one percent inspiration for me, uh, because when you look when you do some research on it, then you find out. You could do the following, you could just take one Hilbert curve or take several, take, take four of them, connect them to a cyclic Moore curve, put them on, um, on the map. Uh, you can use, uh, the, for the whole world, you can use this, uh, this level zero OSM uh, tile uh, with the Mercator uh, mapping, with the Mercator projection. Then um, what you can do is that you can take a point on this map, map it to the distance it has on this on this curve uh, from a fixed origin you have to define. Uh, and then if you have t several points, you can all map all of them and uh, you can sort them according to this distance on the on the curve. And the result is that this this order you you find is is an approximation to the traveling salesman problem. Um, it's it's a rather reasonable, not optimal, but reasonable route you find. Um, this has already been studied in the past. Uh, there are you find examples where Meals on Wheels have been using it, and they really improved their their driving times with that. You can also can also use it again for packet delivery for geocaching or for um, home care, uh, wherever you have to, to visit many, many positions. So imagine that you have, you use this, this system as an addressing system for postal services. You simply have this, um, you give it this uh, unique uh, address and the postman simply has to, to sort his, uh, his letters according 
to the to this index and travels them and um, well he can do it rather rather fast so uh, the, regarding the perspiration as I said I'm more on the this one percent side um, yeah what I did or what I'm working on now is another proof of concept uh, I would like to make it um, uh, a complete complete com uh, a complete system but as I said uh, I'm I don't have the perspiration on the one hand and since it's only a hobby I, I can't find the time for that um, and there's even more inspiration just to improve the, the, the user interface um, regarding the routing this um, this TSP as approximation only is according to the distance on on the map uh, if you have small areas, then um, you get, well, you get no or almost no distortion on a Mercator projection. Um, and you, you get good results, but you can also use, or you, you can even, you can further improve, if, improve the, the result if you use routing algorithms according to, or using the, the roads and highways. Um, and you can also use this, uh, the result as an input for other optimization or algorithms like the two opt algor uh, algorithm which run much faster than than before they don't give better results but they they are um, they finish uh, much earlier yeah basically that that was everything I wanted to tell you without <laughs> without, without this maybe we could make a little bridge what is your question to the room my question to the room, um, could you imagine to use such a, such a system which very easily gives you a short round trip route uh, for whatever purpose? As I already said, geocaching, if you want to, to find 10 caches on a day or so, then you have to, well, if you are visiting a, a foreign place or a for instance, if, if you get to Brussels, you find several ten geocaches on the map, and then uh, have to sort, have to order them according to your, to, to your, uh, have to find the visit order. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, something like that, or if you know someone who does home care or works for DPD or is a recharger, e-scooter recharger, recharger. Um, Room. Anybody interested in this or could see somewhere in interest? <coughs> Is there anybody? Yeah? Yeah, I work at the airport of the Bowl in Amsterdam. Sorry, could you? Um, yeah, sorry. I work at the Amsterdam airport. Yeah. I work actually with indoor Wi-Fi, so I would have to walk indoors. And uh, we have a lot of um, yeah, contractors that need to go through different port uh, rooms in the in the airport it's quite interesting because we they need to go through security filters and other things to go somewhere a place and then they need to get out and they go to other places and actually are you super big i'm finished now so, so i don't need it anymore but are you are you doing to, uh, to the, the best route to walk through all the yeah, sorry i have to just to listen to you so actually, okay yes but then we have like more logic with uh, how you cross security filters indoor at the airport yeah, but then even this algorithm uh, I just presented, it would prob it could help you uh, if you if you put another algorithm on it, uh, which also um, considers the the waiting times at the security filters um, to get well to quickly get a result because those algorithms, if you have ten or several ten um, locations, they usually they have certain they have immense run times. They are rather slow because this traveling salesman problem is one of the the most complicated um, or most complex solvable problems in computer science. It could help, yes. Would a, a conversation at another time, another place, be worthwhile for the two of you? Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. well you you have something out of yeah. this meeting that <laughs> I think <laughs> will work for you. Is there anybody else who has a question to 
Yeah. Yeah, it is such a bummer with the screen, so I thought maybe it would be nice that if like if, if anyone's interested in Stickle literature at point faster than we go to the GP, then online resources which might have a trace of what yeah. you said and then we could find yeah. <laughs> So these addresses, um, you, ha you can have a look, but um, they are also at the, uh, currently at a low level of implementation. But, um, well, not really because they are doing this Hilbert uh, optimization and then you can't stop it before that. They are doing a two-opt optimization to find an um, even shorter route. So... Um, unfortunately, you have not been able to show your algorithms like last year. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it sort of flew at the time <laughs> of my head, but uh, I'm not a mathematician. Okay.